I'm backing up my truck, I'm gonna hook it up, loading up my boat with all my gear. I've been working hard all week, trying to make ends meet, spending time wishing I was fishing. Oh, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. Gather up your gear and come along. Well, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. This is Terry Wickstrom. Join Karen Collum, Greg Collagio, and me as we take you to some of our favorite fishing spots from Colorado to Minnesota, the Arctic Circle to Central America and beyond as we revisit episodes of Mountain States Fishing and Angling Adventures Television on the best of fishing with Terry Wickstrom. So finally going to get to meet John, huh? Is he going to be waiting for us? Yes, pickups here. I'm sure he's here. Let's go in and see what's going on. Let's go say hi. I'm anxious to get out and do some fishing too. This uh, he's got a nice little store here with good inventory, good bait. All right. There's John. John. Well, I'm here with John Harvey of Flea Fly Lures. It's Pleasure to finally meet you, John. We spoke on the phone you. lots of times, and I use your product. Um, you've seen and heard me mention flea fly lures on my program many times um, in many different situations. I love your jigging spoons. We've done two or three different TV programs using those, and I wrote an article for the In Fisherman using them. Well, John and I got to talk, and he said, you know, we got a great fishery down here, Meredith Lake in Texas, and you ought to come down and fish it. It's one of the best walleye lakes around. So not believing there was good walleye fishing in Texas, he arranged to bring me down here. And we're going to go out and give it a try. But in addition to walleyes, the lake has some other good species, doesn't it? Yeah, we've got smallmouth bass, some of the best in the state. We've got, uh, we've got the state record in small, on smallmouth bass, as well as the yellow perch and the walleye. So you've got three state records in this lake. You've got yellow perch, smallmouth bass, and walleyes. How big was that, that record walleye? Walleyes, 11 pounds, 14 ounces. Well, I don't know if we're going to get another state record, but join us. Steve Mullins is going to be joining us. We're going to be out in the water. So join us out on Meredith Lake, Texas, and we'll see what the walleye fishing is really like. Well, why don't you describe a little bit the type of area that we're fishing here, Steve? Well, we're setting up in here in the, uh, right off of some uh, pretty deep water, and we have a rock slide here and a ridge running out to the west here that's holding some pretty good fish right now. And I'm the front of the boat's about 15 feet, and the back of the boat's sitting in. What about? We're in 21 off of here, so, so, so we're, we're right on the edge of that. Good. And we're marking some real good fish here, just on the edge of this break. Well, you know this lake pretty well. In fact, uh, um, John Harvey, who invited us down here with Flea Fly, they hold a Flea Fly annual tournament or invitational tournament, is it? Or? Yeah, it, uh, it's the first weekend of May, and uh, it's real good to come down here. Uh, this lake's probably uh, 60 days. 60 days in front of the stuff going on up in Colorado. So a lot of the guys come down and, and we really have a good time. It's, uh, it's a good tournament. Guys come down and, and get started for the season right here at Lake Maris. So. Well, you kind of own this tournament though because it's been on for four years and you've won it twice, you and Cheryl, right? Well, we've had some pretty good luck here. It's and, a team uh, tournament, is that right? Yeah, it is. And you fish with your wife, Cheryl? Cheryl and I, uh, Cheryl and I have been tournament fishing uh, Probably since the late 80s, so 89. Nice and, rock. Uh, we have a lot of fun traveling around, meeting a lot of wonderful people. I know you guys do a lot. Well, you sure know this lake. Well, that's, you know, that's why when you invited me to come down with you, I figured if you won the tournament down here twice, I might be with the right guy. Well, we'll see here. Hopefully, we put some fish on the boat for us. What I'm tying on here is a little flea fly jig. Um, it's manufactured by John Harvey, one of the people that invited us down here. And uh, it's a great little jig to add live bait to because the little uh, hair-like tail in the body is just a real subtle action. It doesn't interfere with the bait and it just gives it some color and presentation. We 
give you a close-up of this later so you can see what they look like. They're available in uh, several sizes, all the way down to uh, little ones for panfish and crappies, and up to bigger ones that are good for walleyes and uh, smallmouth and things. I think I'll tip this with a little bit of a nightcrawler since you got a bite. Or maybe I'll try a leech again. What we're going to do here is, um, we didn't pick up as many fish jigging as we'd like to, so we're going to try to find some more fish by running bottom bouncers. We've got some transitions from sand. If you look over here, you can see the sand and the rocky shore, and there's a flat kind of that comes out. We've marked some fish in about 25 feet of water, so we're going to run bottom bouncers with uh, nightcrawler harnesses and spinner blades and see if we can locate some fish and hopefully pick up a few bigger fish. There we go. Good one. Feels okay. I don't think it's real big. Okay. No, it's a little one. I can get it. All right. There. Oh, no, that's pretty nice, nice fish. fish. Oh, that's not bad. Pretty nice fish. Got it down nice and deep. Can I help you out there? I can get it. Go ahead and keep fishing. I'll try to keep us going here. See if we can't get another one. Boy, it was a subtle, subtle bite. Nice Lake Meredith walleye. Well, I was going to let him go anyway, so that's good. Well, I tell you, the bite is really subtle. Just he picks it up and he picked it up and I just let him and finally he turned and it set the hook on himself. Um, we may have to go to a rigging presentation here without the spinners and go slow. Well, I'm gonna get back in the water and see if I can get another one just a little bigger. You know, another one bit the tail off. What they're doing is biting the end of the worm off. You know, when walleyes are really aggressive, you'll catch them on the front hook and they'll have this whole thing in their mouth. In fact, about 80% of the time you catch them on the front hook. These fish are hitting so light and picking it up just so gently that even the ones we have caught have had the back hook in their mouth. So we may end up having to go to a more subtle presentation, something, a, a rigging presentation, and let us feed a little bit of the worm to them. We're going to try this for, for a while longer and see what happens, though. We may end up having to rig these and, and almost spoon feed them. That's almost looking like we're going to have to try something a little bit slower. I got one plan. I think. There we go. Yeah. Right off that point again. Same spot we go through. Yeah, same spot. Boy, this I'm marking some nicer fish down there too. I'm gonna need a net on that one, Terry. Oh yeah, why don't you net this one? I don't think it's real big, but I want to keep the boat going here. There we go. All right. Um, he's on the, the back hook again. You know, once again, I was telling you before, that this fish is hooked on the, the back hook of my, the, the last hook of my ha crawler harness. When these fish are real aggressive and really hitting, they almost always get them on that front hook. And when they're picking it up, I mean, it's not like they're hitting it and turning and going. They're picking it up and you're feeling them tap and take that worm in their mouth and mouth it, but they're not really taking it. If you drop it back, they feel the change in tension and let it go. But if you keep just steadily moving, you can't set the hook, but you gotta keep just steadily moving until you feel them start to load the rod and turn. Then you can start tightening the line and let the hook set itself. That one's probably about, about 15 inches, I suppose, huh? Yeah. We'll sure. let that one go. And hopefully we'll get a few bigger ones here pretty soon. But we're catching some fish. I tell you what, this is a, we're in the southern range of the walleye fishing. We're down in Meredith Lake, Texas. And this lake produces some awfully big fish, and it's just a, it's just a wonderful reservoir to come and fish. So you need to come down if you, we're, we're an eight hour drive out of Denver. So if you live in the mountain region, drive down to Lake Meredith, try walleye fishing, smallmouth bass fishing, largemouth, white bass, crappies. It has a three state records come out of this lake, the walleye, the smallmouth bass, and the perch. 
It's just a wonderful canyon type reservoir. It's not what you expect to, to see in the prairie country of uh, Texas, and it's just a great fishery and you should get down and try it. You know, we're running these bottom bouncers across in pretty specific depths, about 23 to 26 feet, right around 25 feet. And we're getting hits on almost every pass when we go by this point. But they're so subtle and so soft, we've really had a tough time getting them to get the night crawler in their mouth so we could get a hook into them. Except for maybe this one. There we go. Oh. This feels like it might be a little better fish, Steve. Okay. Maybe not, it's hard to tell. Well, we got a net here just in case here. No, it's another little one. I'll just get him. Okay. Boy, he was a must have been a weightlifter. <sighs> Felt stronger than that. There's one. You got one? You need the net? Yeah, let's see what we got here. Yeah, this feels like a pretty good fish. Oh, if you need a net hauler. I'm gonna come and help you anyway, since your other rods. We've got a white bass here, I a think. A white bass? Yeah. Swing him up. There we go. You know, it just shows you that um, bottom bouncers of the crawler harness are an excellent presentation for virtually any kind of fish. And the chartreuse is working better than the metal. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did switch to chartreuse. <laughs> See, he's sneaking up on me. Well, I have to get a pair of pliers to get that hook out of him. I had a bite on this other rod, but uh, he just hit it and then uh, walked away from it. Okay. There you go. Did you just have a single hook harness on it? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a white bass. Um, these are great panfish. These are a schooling fish, typically. And uh, they get, oh, quite a bit bigger than this, but they're just, they're good eating. And you can, when these are on, you can come out to a lake like this and just catch a ton of these on little jigs and mm -hmm. topwater baits. They're a lot of fun, and we're, we're on sand transition right here, and those white bass like that sand. Okay, we'll put him back in the water. You didn't want to keep any of these this time, did you? No. We'll, we'll get, him back, get him back in the water. We're going to try to go specifically after some bigger fish. We've caught a lot of fish today. We're going to take heavy bottom bouncers and fish some real deep structure with uh, crawler harnesses and spinner blades and see if we can't find maybe just a little bit bigger fish than the ones we've been catching today. Should we get at it, Steve? Let's go for it. All right. You know, Steve, when you're running bottom bouncers, you use really long rods. There's some real reasons for that, isn't there? Well, uh, I found that uh, the, uh, these are eight and a half foot steelhead rods, and this particular uh, blank right here is a, is a heavy uh, action rod. And I find uh, that I have good success running bottom bouncers, and especially heavy bottom bouncers, uh, where I can get the bouncer and the bait out away from the boat a little bit, and this is a very easy way to do that. And plus, this is actually a system, a bottom bouncer system, where I'm running 14-pound test line on these reels here, and I tie my own blades and the leaders on, on the uh, worm harnesses. I have those uh, tied with 12-pound test line, and so each time I snag or whatever, I don't lose my bottom bouncer. And I find that the, uh, that the uh, long rods actually load up with these uh, three, three ounce bottom bouncers. And you can see I've got some bend in the rod here a little bit. And that, uh, that bait down there is, is following along with uh, tension on this rod. And it's almost an automatic hookup system. And so uh, you really don't have to worry too much about hook sets. If you have a fish hit this worm harness uh, running behind this long rod where you've got tension on the rod already built in with the bottom bouncer, uh, it's going to be an automatic hookup. So it works real well for uh, running deep water. You can run fast running these big bouncers, run large blades. And uh, like I say, there's the, uh, the hook set is, is all automatic. So well, let's see if we can set that hook in. It's kind of a lazy, way to, a lazy way to catch walleyes. With this many lines out, we have to keep the boat moving, so I'm going to bring him right up to the back corner, Jerry. Okay.
All right. That's what we're after. All right, you bet. You bet. Not the monster we're looking for, but a good solid fish. There we go. There's a bite. Oh. You got a good one? No, a little. Little, little smallmouth. Boy, look at the fight in those things, though. They, no, he got away. That's all right. Fun anyway. Little smallmouth bass. Right up here on top <coughs> and about 11 feet. Yeah, we're just about top of this hump, I think. Yeah. What we're doing is we're working these rigs across a hump. There's a ridge that runs out here, tops out about seven feet, drops out into, well, deep 30, 40 feet over there, and like tapers down 18, 20 feet on the sides. And, we're marking some fish right up on top, and that one was a smallmouth bass, but we're hoping there's some walleyes up here, too. We might have to do some jigging for him, too. 38 right here. That's a decent fish. Let's see how big that one is. 14, 15. Huh? 14, 15. Yeah, I think you're right, but what happened here is... <sighs> Grabbed him exactly the wrong place. 15 exactly. What an eye. This guy has fished these lakes and tournaments before, folks. He knew exactly how long that fish was. I just, uh, Cheryl tells me those things. Oh, is that how it goes? <laughs> Now, in order to keep a fish here, they have to be 16 inches. We're not going to keep any today anyway, but we, uh, we thought we'd measure that one just to see. 15 inches. Well, we need one inch longer to be legal. <coughs> what we're doing here is we're, um, there's a series of a couple humps. We're actually out in the middle of the lake. We've got a couple humps to come up. Well, how, what's the highest you saw them come up about? Well, we're 14 way, way towards the other marker over there, and we're dropping in 27, then back up to 25, and then down to 35. So they range, we're ranging from 35 feet up to about 14 feet, and the fish are actually finding 25, 35 feet deep, but they're relating to these humps. They probably have been moving up and down feeding on them, and after this cold front, they've kind of moved down and they're settled in there, and we're trying to just coax a couple out of there, hoping we'll find one big one down there. There we go. Need the net. Let's see here what we got. Yeah. Can you swing it? I think we can swing it here. That's a little longer fish. The last couple of fish you took were right on top of the hump? Yep, right on the very top of this little about, hump here. About 14 feet? Mm hmm. It's, uh, this little hump has turned out to be a real productive spot. Taking quite a few fish out of it already. You know, we're, uh, we're out from shore uh, some distance here, and, and uh, this has uh, got a lot of loose rock on top, and uh, it's really holding uh, some nice fish for us. Let me tell you what we're using to fish the tops of these humps, and some of that we use to fish off the points, too. It's a pretty basic presentation you've seen us use before. I'm using a plain ball head jig, uh, colored one I have here, and I'm tipping mine with um, Berkeley three-inch tournament power grubs with a chartreuse tail. Now another jig we're using is this flea fly jig, uh, made by John uh, Harvey's company here down in Texas at Meredith Lake. And normally you'll see the flea fly jigs they have a yarn body and some hair on them, and they're really effective just by themselves. But here, what Steve's actually doing is he's taking these uh, Berkeley power worms, these Berkeley ring worms. And he likes the particular tail action on these. So what he does is he takes and breaks a section of this off and then strings that onto the jig. So he gets a presentation about, about like that. And it's very similar in color to the tournament string to grub I'm using. It just has a little different action with the ribbing and a little different tail. Then what we're doing is we're taking those and we're tipping them with a piece of a night crawler, which I have here, trying to get away. And now Steve's putting, you're putting a whole night crawler, aren't you, Steve? Steve's tipping it with a whole night crawler, and what I'm doing is I'm breaking the night crawler in half, and I'm putting on just a half of a night crawler because I like that, that presentation a little better. Now, 
it's kind of a personal preference thing. Earlier I was catching more fish and lately Steve's been catching more fish. So it just, it's kind of what you have confidence in the profile you're looking for. Real basic presentation, we're vertically jigging right below the boat, we let it down the bottom, we pick it up just a little bit and we're just moving it ever so little because these fish are in a very non-aggressive mode so we have to fish a very subtle presentation. So when you're faced with a cold front situation, you really have to finesse the ends of points and the tops of humps. A jig is a great way to do it. So get out and try it. Oh yeah, yeah. that's a better fish. Yeah, that's, got, that's a little heavier fish. Let me get right the net. Yeah, he's a little heavier fish, Terry. That, oh, that, that. All right, that may be the best one of the day so far. That's definitely a keeper fish. That's a keeper fish. Oh, yeah. Well, he doesn't want to let go of that jig now that he's got it. That's a little better. Meredith Lake walleyes. That's a nice one. We're not going to keep any today, are we? No. I'll we'll get him back in the water, but hey, congratulations. Hey, thank you. Good job. That was fun. Yeah. Oh. Well, you know, guys, we didn't get one like this state record today, but I had a great time, and Meredith Lake really is a good walleye fishery. John, I want to thank you for setting this trip up for us and for running our camera boat today. Steve, it was a pleasure fishing with you again. You know, we, we see each other all the time. We've got to fish together more often. I agree. Thanks for having me, Terry. I appreciate it. I hope you had fun joining us on Meredith Lake, Texas, and you'll join us again next week on Mountain States Fishing Adventures. Mm -hmm.